My name is Agustina Lazaro, and during the last two years, I've been contributing to the Sandra. And today, I'm going to talk about using IPFS to create the metaverse. So let's first talk about what the metaverse is. And well, it's a social network where you interact with friends, people that you meet there in a three-dimensional way. And also there, you have a digital identity, uh, which is custom. custom it's custom for you, and it's your the way that people recognize you. Um, what distinguishes the central from other metaverses is that the users are the ones who owns the platform, right? So how do we do that? Well, the world is divided into parcels, and each parcel has an owner, and it's the owner who decides what to show on the on the world. They could choose to set up a scene, for example, for a casino, for a bar, or even a music festival. And how we do that? Uh, we have um, deployed um, contracts in Ethereum to check the ownership of those lands and the wearables. And to check the ownership, we use the graph in the backend services. Um, so we have uh, the, um, the contract for lands, which where you can own a land and then uh, let others have permissions to deploy some scene on the world. We also have uh, NFT collections as wearables, where the wearables creators can mint a collection and then sell them in the marketplace. Uh, and then uh, you as a user, you can choose those wearables, buy them, and then set up your, uh, your avatar. And that's where we store them in the user's profiles. Um, we, you, we can also have a name in the center run, and that's like the identity uh, that you own, right? What, so what happened with that? There are a lot of files, and it's, a, it's too many assets to store scenes and 3D models and wearables and pictures, so we need to store them some, uh, in, a, in somewhere, and we have to do that uh, decentralized, right? So what we have are decentralized servers, which store all the data that the client needs to, to run, right? The community owns the, the servers, which means that there is a, the decentralized DAO, which uh, is uh, responsible of approving the, the list of servers that, that are in the DAO. So they, they have to synchronize between them because we have all the content replicated on each of them so the client can connect to any of them and we'll get the same information, right? Um, the way we do that is every, every server, which we name Catalyst, uh, is doing a polling mechanism to all the others to retrieve the files and the entities. And this works okay, but we wanted to go a little bit further and uh, test two things. The first thing is that as you may assume, we have lots of data, and we have like the, all the historical data, like all the changes that have happened on a scene, and also the way that the files are replicated together. Well, let's first talk about the historical data. What happens? For example, this is the Genesis Plaza for the Sandran, which uh, was away in 2020, and there was a change in 2021. So the servers need to retrieve the content, the latest content. They don't need to serve the how was the Sandran two years before, right? But we want to store that data as a backup. And for, for example, if you want to run the world how it looked a year before, if you run a full node, which means that you have all the historical data, all you need to do is enlarge your disk, and everything will work OK. The only thing is that you will need two terabytes of, of disk. But if you want to run a light node, then we, you can enable the garbage collection, which uh, is a mechanism that deletes all the, all the files from the entities that were overwritten by new ones, right? OK, but what happens if all servers then enable garbage collection? Then we may lose those data, and we don't want that. So our idea was to set up a node, an EPFS node, uh, connected to a server who, which listens all the network and listens all the changes and stores, well, pins to IPFS, all the files that are synchronized. So first we uh, uploaded all the, all the uh, files, 
And now, uh, and then um, we set up the server to listen all the changes and automatically uh, uh, pins the new files. And the other thing is the file replication, which, we, what is that? Well, the way that we uh, share those files between the servers. We are doing it by uh, HTTP request, and it's a full mesh topology, right? Because every node is uh, talking to every other node. And our idea was, well, what, what happens if we uh, use IPFS and we leverage that? So we don't have to care about synchronizing files. We only have to care about the, the validations that we need to do to the blockchain and the entities and the way that we need to retrieve those files. But we, can, we only would need to know the hashes that we need to pin, and then IPFS will do uh, all, all, of, all of that part themselves. So that's our idea on a, a trial to, to make something different and um, test if we can leverage the IPFS to work that. Um, that's all, thank you. I was just wondering, could you speak a little bit about your decision to use IPFS instead of RVIV for storing historical data? Instead of? I RVIV for like permanent data to store like historical data. We, we currently have the, the data stored locally, like in the file system, and we have the, the, the way to configure that and store, if you run an node and want to store them on S3, you can. We have been thinking a lot about the way that the catalysts sync each other, and we've been assigning a lot how IPFS does the, that. So that's why I think we chose IPFS to test this. Um, but what we have done so far, it's only the, the historical data, right? We haven't done, used the IPFS to run the sync. How do you handle um, content moderation or cases where like certain content or files might be illegal in certain countries, but would be valid in other ones? Well, the way that we do that now is uh, each of the servers has an owner. Um, it's their responsibility to deny list some entities or files or uh, the thing that they need to moderate. So we, we, are, we are not taking care of the moderation ourselves. We're letting the owners of the catalyst do themselves. We, we only provide the mechanism for them to, to, remo to remove those files and don't serve them. Thank you.